I stocked shelves for 17 years. When I was 32 years old, I got my pension statement. 33 years to go till retirement. Holy cow. I couldn't see myself stacking cans for the rest of my life. Sometimes life comes down to a coin toss. Do I stay here or leave? So I threw a loony and let it fall. And what do you know? I flew. Now I work up here in northern Saskatchewan, flying bush planes and running fishing lodges. I've been doing this for 12 years. I look back at that point in time and I'm so grateful I rolled the dice. I found what I really cared about. You know, if you'd asked me uh, 12 years ago and said, hey, you're going to be flying bush planes in northern Saskatchewan, working at a, you know, a bunch of different resorts and managing a company with all these resorts. Um, you know, I was so far off my radar, you know, people, direct, you know, the direction of your life can change, change at any time, and, uh, you know, sometimes change can be scary, it's that leap of faith. Say Saskatchewan, and everyone, even Canucks, think of wheat. I grew up in BC and never wanted to visit Saskatchewan because I thought it was just flat, a place where you could watch your dog run away for three days. The bottom third of the province is prairie, but where I run my plane, it's nothing like that. This is what people don't know about Saskatchewan. There are about 100,000 lakes. If I dropped you off down there, you could never hike out because you'd hit a lake or river every 50 steps. Just north of us in the Northwest Territories, the tundra begins. When you look at this landscape from the air, it's impressive with all the water, but it looks somewhat featureless. Mother Nature scraped it all one direction for as far as the eye can see. But when you get down there on the ground, you realize there's a tremendous amount of life here. In this climate, pike grow slowly, about one inch a year. The Saskatchewan record is 55 inches. Landing a 40 inch northern is a given. We get lots of 48 and 49 inch fish. But it's that extra inch that counts. Everybody wants that ultimate 50. If you land a big pike and measure the age in inches, you're landing a really old man. Speaking of which... When you get the invitation to head to Saskatchewan to fish for trophy pike, it's a big deal. And you don't hesitate, you get in a plane and go. A lot of people wonder how I got where I'm at today. I sometimes wonder the same. There's certainly not a recipe to my life. I think I just got lucky. Growing up in New England, I never saw myself as an office boy. I studied to be a naturalist in college and I had a lofty goal after graduation. I was going to be a fishing bum. I headed out west to work in a fly shop in Jackson, Wyoming. I was there 23 years. I started at 4.75 an hour. And I quickly learned that not only did I like being involved in the fly shop and managing it, but my greatest love was helping people catch more fish. Uh, whether it be trout on the Snake River or someone going on their first tarpon trip. Eventually gave casting lessons, guided, then managed the shop. This will come as a bit of a shocker, but sometimes working in fly fishing means not having a 401k. So you have to do a variety of things to support yourself. I did some writing, did some photography, got into the art. I wrote my first book on saltwater fly fishing. Gary LaFontaine, read my manuscript, he thought it was a good book, and he said I had to hire someone to do the art. That wasn't an option, so I said screw that, and I taught myself how to paint. The danger in developing your own talents is reaching a critical point at which you have to make a decision. How are you gonna really use your talents and make them your focus? I realized that the, the ultimate goal for me was gonna be to get out of the fly shop and make a living for myself, work for myself, doing a number of different things. I always thought that I would start that when I was 50, but in 2008, when the economy started going bad, um, I saw the opportunity to maybe go out there and get started while, while things were at rock bottom and maybe I could build up from there. 
and it was one of the biggest decisions I ever made in my life. But my wife supported it full on, and that was to quit my full-time job at the fly shop and try to pursue my artwork full-time and maybe a little bit of speaking and more writing. Late October 2009, I walked out that back door for the final time. It was a scary moment in my life because I thought I was going to really possibly be bumped out of the fly fishing industry, which I love so much. Miraculously, the phone started ringing. A lot of opportunities that never came my way because I had a full-time job uh, started coming my way. And, you know, it's been six or seven years now. I haven't looked back. And uh, I'm busier than I ever was when I had a full-time job. And I uh, absolutely love what I'm doing, mixing my artwork with my speaking, my writing and even these special projects. Uh, this week I'm up here fishing in Saskatchewan in the Northwest Territories for one of the greatest fish on the planet, Northern Pike. It's a special time up here. There's 24 hours of daylight this time of year. The sun sets at 11 p.m. and it's back up before three. We're flying out to remote lakes, hopping in stashed boats, and then heading to shallow bays that hold monster pike. They generally hang in these grassy shallows and wait to pounce on something that plops in the water within striking range. When it comes to pike, most people don't jump out of their seats. They think pike are these primordial, lethargic slugs, you know, hanging out in the weeds. Not that interesting at all, really. We headed to uh a number of different bays. The first couple were good. We caught some fish up to 38, 39 inches. But then we hit one that I will remember for the rest of my life. I made a cast and five wakes came out for my fly. Pike take you to beautiful places. They're just different than the ones that are inhabited by trout. They take you into the backwoods, weedy corners of lakes and big sloughs off rivers. There's something about casting to a fish when you don't know if it's going to be 25 inches or 45 inches. With trout fishing, you sort of always know what you're going to catch. They eat a fly so different than any other fish. It's nothing quite like having an apex predator tear into your fly. The wake, the open mouth, then the surge of water when they eat the fly and turn. If you fish and you don't experience this at least one time in your life, you're really shorting yourself. Oh, you can see that wake coming. You see that mouth open up above the water as they're uh, about to take it and you get a little trigger happy and jerk that line away from them. But typically they'll keep after it. So you just wait until you, you see them grab it and then set the hook and you're off and running, so. You know, working, working with Jeff this week, uh, you know, Jeff's a unique individual. It's, uh, you know, he's, he's a different class of uh, fly fisherman. You know, to see a guy who's fished all over the world and, you know, with over 325 species under his belt on the fly, to see a guy getting that excited over northern pike and you know just grin from ear to ear you know that's that's uh, just a great you know ending to a you know an entire week up here it's just been an absolute blast hanging out with them and uh, laughing like kids every so often when you get those double headers jesus i'm just a fishing bum we forget that sometimes it's all just fishing When I'm out here, I want to be a better person. First and foremost, I'm a naturalist. When I land that fish and I'm looking in that fish's eye, I hope that I did it as seamlessly as possible so that fish forgets about it within a week. I've been incredibly fortunate because not only have I been able to make a living at fly fishing, but I'm living my dream. This is what I've wanted to do since I was a little kid. And I am damn thankful for it. I hope that shows in my fishing, my writing, my art, that I am grateful and humbled for the chance to be out here doing this for a living. I'm constantly asked by people, you know, 
how do I do what you're doing? And yeah, it, boy, I asked that same question to, to my mentors when I was younger, especially. And my best advice is fish hard. Uh, that's where it starts. You, you fish, you learn about fishing, uh, you learn about different species of fish, but then branch out. Just keep getting to be a better fisherman in every way you can. And if you do, and you're the type of person like I, I love sharing my information, I love teaching other people, uh, eventually you get recognized and uh, you know, you do favors for people when you help them catch big fish and it comes back to you. But it doesn't just happen fish hard.